Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at SmartView. SmartView is Samsung's version of screen mirroring, which allows you to cast your phone or tablet screen over to any other smart type of device, like a smart TV like we have in the background here that we're going to use, um, any other smart appliance that has a screen, and you can also cast a screen back to your device. We're going to cover all the menu options as well, including some developer options that require a secret passcode. I'll share that with you. We're going to basically cover everything about this. So how do we activate SmartView? Well, there's two different ways. If you're on One UI 5, you can swipe down, go to Settings, and we have a new option in One UI 5 called Connected Devices. You'll click on that, and then you scroll down until you get to SmartView. And you'll just click on that, and SmartView will start up and it will show all your devices that are available. We have another option too to get there, and that is to just swipe down from your notification panel to get to your settings toggles, and you'll typically go over one screen unless you reordered your toggles, and Smart View will be right here, so let's go ahead and click on that. All right, so this is what it looks like when it loads up. We have phone to other device, and it's showing us the devices that we can cast to. We have other device to phone as well. I'm gonna show you that in a little while. This allows you to uh, transmit video from a Samsung TV, as well as other Samsung devices. And we'll take a look at that. Up here in the top right hand corner, we have the three dots. This is to get into our settings. Let's take a look at that real quick. So until you actually connect to a device, most of the settings are grayed out, except for the lab section. Um, and we have one option here, allow all apps to be cast. We'll cover that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started by connecting to a device. So we have the 65 inch TCL Roku TV in the background. Let's go ahead and connect to that. And it's letting us know that we're about to cast our screen and we'll go ahead and say start now. So let's go ahead and let that start. Um, it does take a little bit, especially the first time you do it during the day, but it's not too bad. Uh, you'll see it's loading up in the background here. Give it just a minute. All right, and pretty soon that little nag screen down at the bottom will go away. All right, so now you see the fold four screen and it's mirroring whatever I'm showing. So if I swipe up and go to the app drawer, you will see the app drawer. And here you can take a look at the latency as I go up and down, app drawer, down, app drawer, back down. It's not too bad, you know, well under half a second, that's for sure. I'll say it's in the milliseconds range. Let's take a look at that again. So the latency is pretty good. So um, now that we're connected to it, let's go ahead and dive into the settings and take a look what we, we can actually do with this. So. When you start using SmartView, it puts this little icon up here at top. I don't know if it's gonna really show it too good on camera, but we have this P right here. Let me see if I swipe over to another screen if it shows it better. So this only one, this icon right here, this is the one. So click on this and then we have a few options. We have AppCast, which lets us pick any one of these apps and just cast the application itself. This is super handy too. So what you'll see is an available list of apps and what happens is, you can't click on them here. It's just giving you the list of ones that are available. But when you open up that app, you'll be able to just cast that app by itself and continue using your device while it runs. So we'll take a look at uh, using YouTube here in a little bit to show you what that looks like. So if we go back and go back to the other available options, we can adjust the screen aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and click on that. So we have fill screen on phone or fill screen on connected device. So you'll see what it looks like. I have them both in view here. Right, so there's some mirror, the screen behind it. Here's the phone. So if I switch this setting, and I'm sorry if things are going in and out of focus, you'll see that the phone kind of matches the screen more and that we have black bars and stuff on the phone. I really don't like this view much. I usually just use full screen on phone. All right, but the options there if you want it. So what other options do we have? Um, we also have pause smart view and we have disconnect and then we have our settings. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings real quick. All right, so now I'm gonna let the uh, camera focus on the TV screen, because again, we're just casting everything from the Fold 4 to the TV. So let's go through these options real quick. So we already talked about the set aspect ratio. Um, hide notification on TV. So if you look at the TV right at the top of it, you'll see that I have my notification bar, the notification panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and look what happened. The notification bar disappeared. So a great way to get the most out of your screen real estate, I'll go ahead and turn it back off to where the notification panel now shows back up. Uh, we have the next option, which is keep phone screen on. So while you're watching YouTube videos and stuff, it's smart enough to keep YouTube playing in the background while your phone screen will turn off. 
and it'll keep playing on your TV. However, you have this option to force your screen to stay on if you want it to be that way. Um, I typically just leave it in the default setting and keep it off. We also have show selfie video in smart view menu. So let's take a look at that real quick. So let's bring the phone back into view. Let's let it focus there for a second. So if I turn that on and then I go back up to this menu option, we now have selfie video. And all that's gonna do is open up your camera so you can start taking a group picture with you or your friends and show it on your TV. So it adds another menu option to your available settings. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And then we have the lab section here. So we have allow all apps to be cast. Remember we took a list of those small list of apps that were down here that we could cast? Well, this allows you to bypass it and allow any application to be cast to the screen while you continue to use your phone. Um, it's kind of experimental. It's not gonna work with every application, but for the most part, like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all those types of apps, it works just fine. Um, we also have the ability to rotate your screen 90 degrees. It's gonna speak for itself. Here, I'll move the Fold 4 out of the way, let it focus on the screen, and I'll just keep clicking on it. So every time you click on this, it's gonna rotate the uh, screen 90 degrees. And this is useful in situations where you are looking at photos in the gallery application, and maybe some of your photos are sideways or they're recorded at a different aspect ratio and this will allow you to flip it around to where you can view it correctly without having to turn your head sideways. So that's kind of a nice feature. So let's get out of the labs menu here. So now that we're out of the labs menu, you see we have the bottom option called about smart view. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you see on the top, we have the smart view text. Let's go ahead and put that into view. What you wanna do now is go ahead and click on this 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, so it's gonna load up this other screen here with a whole bunch of additional options. The first one is last connected device concept. Um, what this is gonna do is show priority to the most recent device you're connected to and try to auto connect to that. The next one we have is remove SOD concept. So SOD is sound over display. So this is actually a pretty cool toggle. So by default, when you mirror your screen to a TV like we are right now, it's going to send the video and the audio over to it. So if we turn on the remove SOD concept, it's only gonna transmit the video over to the um, TV or whatever device you're screen mirroring onto, and it's gonna leave the audio on your device that you're casting from, in this case, the Fold 4. Now this is really helpful if, let's say you wanna use your Galaxy Buds or any other type of earbud, and they're connected to your phone, and you want to view everything on your TV, but you still wanna hear everything on your Galaxy Buds. Well, you turn on this remove SOD concept and the audio is gonna stay on your Fold 4 device or whatever device, Tab S8 Ultra, S22, doesn't matter. The audio will stay local to that device so then you can use earbuds or just use its built-in speakers instead of going over to your TV. So I think that's pretty awesome. So the next option is ethernet mirroring. If you happen to be connected to devices that are connected via ethernet cables, uh, do keep in mind your USB-C port that you have on all your Galaxy devices, they're all encompassing, you know, you can use ethernet. So if you're connected to an ethernet adapter or an ethernet device, this will allow you to use ethernet to do it. We already went over the lab section and all of this is is a toggle to turn it on and off. Allow cast all apps. This is the same option that's in that lab section, right? We talked about it. It lets you cast all the different applications. App cast is able touch view. So if you're casting to a touch screen type device that normally has touch input, you can disable the touch input right here. Now we have two very cool options below that. We have Google cast and Lebo cast. So this screen mirroring technology is its own technology. You know, like we have, let's say Google Chromecast, we have Amazon Fire, we have Apple AirPlay, we have MirrorCast on Windows, right? We have all these different screen mirroring technologies. And what we have included here in SmartView is the ability to do Google Cast, Google Chromecast, as well as LeboCast. So if we turn either of these options on, this allows us to connect to a Google Chromecast device, uh, a TV, right? If you have a Chromecast stick or any of the hubs. And also we can turn on the same functionality for LeboCast type devices. So SmartView is all encompassing. Um, and you're gonna find out when we look at the second screen functionality, it handles many of these protocols, pretty much everything other than AirPlay. And our next option here is start second screen. So in order to demonstrate this, let's head back to the desk and I'm gonna grab the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and we're gonna see this in action real quick. All right, so we've got the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 all fired up here. 
and we're in the smart view settings. Now in order to use the start second screen option, you wanna disconnect from any device you might be already projecting to. So I already went ahead and disconnected from the TV. So what we'll wanna do is turn on this toggle, all right? And then you wanna click on the text where it says start second screen. This is gonna put this in screen mirroring mode. Remember how we talked about there was phone to other device? Well, now we're doing the opposite. Now we're casting from another device to phone, the bottom option that we saw at the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We're gonna click on this. This now puts a fold four into the mode in which it's able to start receiving a signal. And we have two different modes, drawing and video. One's a little bit faster, one's better response, less latency. So now that we have this enabled, we can set the fold four down. We're gonna go over to the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. We're gonna hit the Windows key plus K at the same time. And then in our available devices, you're gonna see Brian Z Fold 4. Let's go ahead and click on that real quick. Give it just a moment. All right, took a little bit to connect. Then again, I'm on One UI 5 beta. So I mean, this beta version of the software is a little bit slower at some of these tasks like that, I've noticed. Um, but as you can see, we are now casting the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 image over to the Z Fold 4. So, and this is all happening via second screen functionality that's built into that smart view menu. All right, so that's pretty cool what you can do with the second screen functionality. Now our next option is advanced options all the way at the bottom. So the first time you click on that, it's going to ask you for a passcode. I'm gonna put that passcode up on the screen for you now. It's pound zero zero lowercase sv zero zero and you only have to enter that one time and once you do that's going to take you in to this screen right here so these first few options i've done a whole bunch of research on it and i cannot find anything for the first three so the first three are enable virtual device mode disable cdd pop-up and disable internal presentation flag i honestly have no idea what those are for uh, these menu options are not documented anywhere online. This whole menu of period, I haven't found it anywhere else online. So the amount of information available is definitely very limited. But we, the other three options I am familiar with and a couple of them are pretty cool. So we have connect to target device. So this is really cool in situations to where you have a device on your network that you know is capable of screen mirroring, but smart view isn't displaying it in the list of available items, right? To cast to. So what you can do now is connect to target device and we can manually enter in the MAC address or the IP address of that said device and it will try to forcibly connect to it. So this is really awesome for cases where you just don't see your device but you know it has that capability, you can force the connection right here. We also have set group owner intent. I don't really know what this means other than it says the default is 13 and it looks like there's values between like one and 13. I'm not really sure what this is. If anyone has any idea, please drop a comment down below. We'd definitely appreciate it. Um, and let's take a look at the last option, and that is set time for burn-in test. So I can see this being useful in like a demonstration environment, like let's say they're doing this in Best Buy, or you're using this for some type of conference, and you're using monitors that are OLED panels. I can see this being useful in which you can set a timeout for how long SmartView will stay active and then it's gonna turn the connected device off, at least the screen mirroring portion of it. So you can basically set a timeout to prevent OLED screen burn-in. Um, another point I wanna make about SmartView is SmartView is also part of the Samsung Flow application. So when you are casting one device to another, like you see on the screen here, I have uh, my old Z Fold 3 that I used to have being cast onto the Tab S8 Ultra. That is being handled via SmartView. I'll go ahead and link a full tutorial on Samsung Flow down in the description if you want to get a little more familiar with that. But SmartView is part of Samsung Flow. All right, so earlier in the video, we talked about being able to cast certain apps, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. So what I'm referring to is this, the app cast, and you're not gonna see it on the TV screen. Let me bring in the Fold 4 here. So if we go to app cast and we click on this list, it shows us our list of available apps, right? And we see that YouTube is one of them. So we can basically, even if the TV doesn't support it natively, we can go ahead and fire up YouTube. And here I have my channel up. And we can go ahead and play YouTube videos or any other apps that are in that list. And like I said, you can turn on the labs functionality to almost cast any app that you have from your phone. 
So really powerful functionality built in here into SmartView. You can hear now that we have the audio also going to the TV. And remember, we do have that disable SOD concept in which the audio will now go back to the Fold 4. So some pretty cool functionality. Um, SmartView is definitely very powerful, a great way for you to mirror your Samsung Galaxy device to almost any other device. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas for any future videos, please drop them down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.